Today I'm going to talk about the big one. Yes, the Lindy turn, or as a lot of people are calling it these days, the swing out. Although I would say that the Lindy turn and the swing out are actually slightly different things, but it doesn't matter. It's just terminology and what matters is the dance. So what is it about the Lindy turn or swing out, uh, which is so important to Lindy Hop? Well, it's the nearest thing that Lindy Hop has to a basic step, uh, which is perhaps a little strange in that it's also a strong contender for the most difficult step that Lindy Hop has. Yes, it's a bit of a hurdle for beginners to, uh, to get over right at the start because the basic move is so terribly difficult. And that's one of the things I want to get clear to you as I'm talking to you now. The move I'm about to show you is actually quite difficult. We may uh, make it look easy, but as we've been doing it for quite a while. Now, I say this as warning that, you know, uh, careful, this is a bit tricky, but actually more to reassure because if, at the end of this video, uh, you feel that you haven't quite got this move, and maybe you've even been to some lessons, and you feel that you haven't quite got this move, that's not because you're a bad dancer, that's because you're normal. Pretty much nobody, in fact, I've never known, and I've, I've been a Lindy Hop teacher for quite some while, and I've never known anyone just get this move straight away. Even very talented dancers take months, really, to crack it. Um, and if I were to go to the top, camp somewhere in the world and, and take lessons from the absolute top teachers of the world, they may still, even in the super advanced class um, that of course I would be taking, um, then they would perhaps still do a lesson on this move, on the fine points of it. Um, so it's one of those moves that you never completely master, but that's one of the things which makes it good. Um, so I'm going to go through this move uh, with my astonishingly able assistant here, Laura Haltonen of the Jazz Factory Studio here in Helsinki. And uh, we'll, see, well, we'll just see how we get on. So the first thing is a rock step. Normally there are exceptions, but we're going to start with the, the standard. So I extend my left hand. She takes with her right. I have a sort of horizontal hook and she has a vertical hook. Neither of us is holding on with her thumbs. Holding on with thumbs, quite unnecessary and, and, and bad. Don't do it. Um, another thing is that uh, I'm actually not using all my fingers. Right now I'm just using the top three. I would say probably most of the work is done by the first joint of, of my longest middle finger here. Um, it depends on how big my hands are and how big her hands are and just my personal preferences. Uh, so uh, I'm using three fingers at this point. So. My arm is fairly relaxed and our, our connection is about halfway between us, somewhere at around belly button height. So the center of gravity height is quite good. So now we go into our rock step and we sink into it, rock step. Now, this may surprise you, but entire lessons that last over an hour get taught on the rock step. It's something that beginners never get completely right, but don't worry, as long as you do some reasonable approximation of this, you're fine. You do have more to do than the footwork though. You've got to establish this connection here. So I'm not just holding her hand loosely, I'm, I'm creating tension here. She and I are both sinking into our postures and this creates a bit of tension here. Already she knows that I want her to come forwards. Now there are people who do actually lead forward during the rock step. They go one, two. Do you see that she came forwards there? Um, I'm not saying that's wrong, that's not what I teach. Um, I would say though that uh, an important thing for the follow to bear in mind is not to walk forwards on the one, two, unless very definitely led forwards. It's much better if you're uncertain to keep everyone's options open and, and counterbalance back. So normally one, two, and we haven't gone anywhere yet, but we've got this, okay, are you ready? We're coming forwards. And we're facing each other, but my body, my, my torso is inclined slightly to the right. My chest is pointing somewhere into that corner of the room. And Laura as well is slightly turned to her left, so uh, her chest is pointing somewhere in that direction. Okay, so we're already one quarter of the way through the move. So how difficult can the rest be? The next bit is quite tricky. So she is going to reach her left hand for my right shoulder. Okay, and one great thing about that is that it means that I will find it easy to reach under that arm to take her by the left shoulder blade on her back. If she doesn't reach for my shoulder, it can be quite difficult threading through and, or I have to go around the outside and oh, that's awkward. So another good thing that she, uh, about her reaching for this shoulder is it causes her to turn. Do you see she turned and, and, and turned her back to you? I'll, I'll come over here so you get a different angle on it. As she reaches for this shoulder, I withdraw that shoulder. So as she's re reaching for a thing which is moving away from her, it causes her to turn. And if I were to keep going round and round, she's constantly waiting, trying to get this, this shoulder here, but I'm retreating it, it causes the both of us to turn round and round, which is good. Also, I bring my right hand onto her left shoulder blade. 
And from here, even if she hasn't made contact here, I can pull her round with me. So again, this is something that causes us to turn this connection with my right hand on her left shoulder blade. There is another force that is uh, bringing us round, but this is a very, very gentle force. This connection here does not collapse. So I don't push her round. I don't, I don't sort of push her round like, like, like this. Instead, that's, that's awkward and quite unnecessary. Um, when you get good at this, it's so gentle, in fact, that you might not even be aware of it. I don't push around, but I just keep a bit of frame here. Just keep a little bit of it for my left hand and she in her uh, left arm and she in her right arm. And that's another force that causes us to turn round facing each other. There is another reason uh, to turn, and that is safety. Yes, self-preservation. You see, my partner, all going well, trusts me. She, she nodded. She nodded. She, she, I, I said, all going well, my partner trusts me. So, I here am establishing a tension along this line. So she thinks, oh, he wants me to go forward, presumably along that line. So naturally, I'm safe to do so. He's not going to stay where he is because that would be mad. I would crash into him. So I have to get out of the flipping way. So how do I do this? As I reach for her shoulder, I turn to my right and we miss each other. But in fact, the distance between us is very small. If she in terror of crashing into me and not trusting me, decides to take a rather wide path around, and I, with similar fears, try to take a, a wide path the other way. It doesn't look good all, at all. It's quite awkward. We end up moving round. I have to really reach, and both of us have to, so much more floor to cover. Uh, our postures have gone. The connection's not as good. And if we're trying to do something fancy and fast with spins and so forth in it as well, it's not going to happen. So it's easy to turn quickly, particularly, if you're close to someone. So, imagine uh, my hand here and this hand here are going to come straight at each other in a line, like that, straight at each other, but they turn. They turn to miss each other, so I don't clap because my hands rotate. I don't go like that, so I don't go round my partner like that. Instead, we rotate, we like those hands, and by rotating, we miss each other. Okay, so that's the three and four. Uh, and the standard footwork is a triple step, which takes us onto the other foot. So I will end up on my left, she on her right. So I go tri two, triple step. Now, something that beginners do now is they look down and go, ah, something's completely wrong because we're doing the same footwork and yet our feet are not in the same position. Which of us has gone wrong? And they, they start altering their feet to match the other. Okay. It's okay. You see, we started on mirrored feet. So I was on my right foot and she was on her left foot, but we're turning the same way, which means that we actually will end up quite naturally in this asymmetrical arrangement. So everything's fine. She, all going well, has her weight on her right foot and I can help her get her weight on her right foot with my right hand, which is on her back. So if she went hurtling that way a little bit too, too far, I can oh, catch her. Whew, okay, there she is. Everything's fine, she's on her, her right foot. I, I've got my weight mainly on my left and I'm fairly symmetrical, sinking down here. There's quite a lot of space between us. My right arm isn't dead straight, but it's not far off. There's just a little bit of curve in it and that defines the space between us. So you can see there's quite a lot of space, which is handy for a thousand things. I might, for instance, want to turn her in that space because that's the next thing I'm thinking of doing. So lots of space is good. Now, she was going, if you remember, that way. So there's a certain amount of residual momentum in that direction, which is great because then as I sink and I use the curve of my arm to create this stretch, and we get this lovely stretch moment, which is great. And you can use that stretch because what comes after a stretch? A twang, okay? So then the twang is I send her over there. One thing uh, that uh, uh, some uh, follows do when they're, when they're told to, to counterbalance into his arm is they kill the momentum dead. They go, ha, da, zoom, zha. okay. They, they, uh, they, they stop themselves, and if, they, if she stops herself completely, I've actually got, no, there's no, nothing here. She, she stopped herself. No, let me stop you. So now I'm, she's sinking into my hand, but she, she can still go wrong because she can think, ah, my job, she can feel, is, is to give him loads and loads and loads of resistance there, because resistance is good, right? And now I have to, oh, flipping hell, I have to bodily heave her over there. 
which is not really what I was after at all. What I was after is a little bit of stretch and counterbalance, but the stretch is followed by a willing twang. So when I pull with my right uh, hand in order to signal for her to, uh, to move forwards, I'm just telling her, yes, it's time to use that twang, that delicious tw the stretch that we, all that, that, that beautiful stretch we built up, we can now use it to go somewhere and twang. It can be actually quite gentle. It's, it's, it's a sort of a powerful feeling. It's a clear feeling, but it's not a heave, overcoming a massive amount of weight and resistance feeling. Okay, so, so far we've got rock, step, triple step. Now we're gonna do just walk, walk. My right hand will pull her uh, forwards and set her onto her left foot. Step. I, at the same time, am walking onto my right foot. We then go step. She's now facing me. And we've got seven and eight. Seven and eight, do you know, they really don't matter. Do you think they matter, seven and eight? Does it? Do what you like, seven and eight. So you could go the standard triple step, or she did something completely different there. Essentially, sort yourselves out. And one rule of thumb for the lead, if you're a bit new to this, is that what the footwork that you could use is, uh, oh, I don't know, um, right. And similarly, the follow could go um, left, and it'll be fine. So we, we could go, um, oh, uh, um, hey, and we're ready now to go about to the next thing. So that's one way of doing the, the footwork. Just keep your feet under you doing something or other, and then you can rescue yourself if you're a lead by going onto your right foot on eight, or if you're follow onto your left on eight. And again, you'll be fine. So let's see how, how we're doing. We've got rock, step, triple step, walk, walk, something else. Now, when I was explaining this move, I paused on four to talk about the position we were in. Uh, and you have to do that as a teacher. The thing is that then what people tend to do is pause on four. They tend to go one, two, three, and four. Okay, right here, yeah, right, cross feet, uh, distance between us, yeah, or connection, right. Yeah, okay, got it, all right. Um, we'll all right, so now, oh yeah, five, six, seven, and eight. In fact, that stretch that I was talking about on four is perhaps more accurately counted one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. You keep going, don't pause there. So it's boom, boom, yapa ta ta, yum, boom, yata ta ta. Okay, don't come to a halt on four, it doesn't help. Um, little um, uh, safety tip here for, for follows is that uh, another reason that you might uh, reach for his shoulder and turn whilst doing so is to avoid a certain thing happening. You see, it's, imagine uh, the, the floor is full of dancers, the band is playing, and I have to make sure that my partner's not going to crash into anyone, so I have to make sure that there's room to put her there, and then when she gets back I have to make sure that there's room there. So I will quite often just glance behind me, boom, okay there's room here, don't be dumb, you're safe. I'm looking here. Is, have I still got room here? Because there are people doing some wild jazz kicks, but I think we're all right. So I then put her into that space. Don't be dumb. I wasn't looking at her the whole time. So sometimes when I'm reaching for this shoulder blade, I'm not actually looking at what I'm doing. I'm just reaching to where normally that shoulder blade is, as I would expect it to be, because that's what, uh, where it will be with most of my follows. If she's a beginner, it's possible that she doesn't turn on the three and four to face me. And, and one, well, <clears throat> so I go one, two, three, uh, oh, uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> excuse me, madam. Uh, oh. That can happen, you don't want that to happen. So, um, so, so yeah, so reach for the, the shoulder blade. Uh, <laughs> So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Lindy Turn, an introduction to. Um, and, oh, actually, oh, we're, going to, we're going to talk about champagne flutes in a shopping cart. Should we, <laughs> let's talk about champagne flutes in a shopping cart. Now, we want you to imagine uh, that you're going to throw an enormous party, and so you've got a big shopping cart, and you fill it full of, of glassware, of expensive, tall, rattly, not very well packed uh, champagne glasses. And you're moving this around the supermarket. Now, if you were to do that, if you were to push such a trolley and then suddenly whoa, change direction, all the champagne flutes would go Psh, and you'd have a trolley full of broken glass and that would be bad because breakages must be paid for. So what you would do is you would bring it whoa, to a halt and then bring it the other way and, and thus uh, save yourself quite a big bill. 
Uh, another uh, useful thing about this analogy is the turning. Because if I were to uh, try to turn around, I could, if I'm going that way, do a whopping big circle like that, which would use an awful lot of energy and an awful lot of room, and would be difficult to, to bring to a controlled halt at the end. Or I could bring the trolley to a halt, bring it back towards me, and then turn it as it comes past me, and then move off that way. That would be so much easier, wouldn't it? And so much more gentle on the champagne flutes and are much less likely to crash into other shoppers in the supermarket. So, now, I don't wish anyone to believe that I, I see that Laura here is in any way like a shopping cart, because she's not. She's, she's different in so many ways, but just for the sake of the analogy, let us imagine that she is in some ways shopping cart-like. So if I go boom, boom, ja, boom, did you see I just, wah, there was a horrible lurch moment there where I changed direction with, with, with violence that's just not going to help anyone, frankly. So instead, she's a shopping cart. Do, ba, do, be, whoa, okay, now we go, <laughs> we go this way. And uh, as uh, she comes past me, I turn her as she's passing me. Oh, that was so much easier. So she's going up a line and coming back a line, much on a line, much like that shopping cart, the center of gravity of that shopping cart moves on a line. So as it comes past you, you turn around the center of gravity of the cart and move it on. You don't take the center of gravity off the line because that's inefficient and, well, we don't want to be that, do we? There you go, ladies and gentlemen, the Lindy turn. <laughs>